this up, Zechariah, the second chapter, the, starting at the 10th verse, Zechariah, second chapter, let's finish this up, we still got some stuff to finish up here, how does Christ want the church to look? What is he saying to the church? What is he saying to me? Zechariah, the second chapter, what is he saying? Zechariah, the second chapter, the 10th verse. Let's read this together. He says, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, said the Lord, and many nations shall be joined to the Lord 
in that day and shall be my people and I will dwell in the midst of thee and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto thee and the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the holy land and shall choose Jerusalem again mm, God that's something right there Amen. He says, be silent, old flesh, before the Lord, for he is realized up out of his holy habitation. Thus end the reading of God's holy word. Pray with me. Father, I thank you for your word, for your word is life. Your word is my life. I can't live without your word. I can't breathe without your word. I can't exist without your word, Jesus. Speak word to me right now, God. Help me in my present state that I'm in. Father, I know that you're able, God. Send the word to my situation, God. One word will turn it around. One word will heal my body, God. One word will bring my family back. Speak a word through this servant, oh God. Take him out of himself, oh God. Use him mightily, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let him see you in the text. Let him preach only when you show him. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm yours. All that I am, all that I'm not. Everything that I've got, I belong to you. I stand now before your people. Speak through me, Jesus. Let me walk in this gift that you have given me. Let me flow in the anointing that's on my life. Father, I thank you right now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every believer shout amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been here, amen, for a little while. Touch your neighbor and neighbor. I want a church without walls. I want a church without walls. My brothers and sisters, we've been here for a little while now. We've been dealing with this because God is preparing us for the new year. He takes us to Zechariah, the first chapter, amen, and he begins to show us, amen, how displeased he is with Israel. It scared some of us here and as we began to preach the text because some of us know that God is displeased with us. It shocked us that God would jump right out at the first chapter and talk about how angry he was with us because we will not turn away from our sin. He began to use Zechariah in such a mighty way that he gave him three visions. Three visions that we see in the latter part of the first chapter and we see in the second chapter. We see first Jesus, as we were told last week, that he was there with his horsemen. He was looking upon the turtle tree. We recognize that the turtle tree means the church. And how Jesus stands there, he sits behind the turtle tree. Amen. Even though that the turtle tree is in a bad state. Amen. He still looks upon it. We need to understand this because it gives relevance to the text. Because we need to understand that even though we may have fallen away from God. And God is not pleased with us. He still looks over us. Amen. 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 I like this in the text because he helps me to understand Amen. That there is nothing that I can do that will cause God to fall away from me. Amen. I'm so happy that I got a God that even when I mess up, he's still looking over me. Do I have a witness in the building here? He's there behind the turtle tree. He's watching. The Bible says that he is fighting in the spiritual realm. We see the colors of the horses that helps us understand that some of the horses are red from the blood, hallelujah, that was shed from the horsemen fighting for the church. Some of us need to understand that there is blood, hallelujah, in the atmosphere that horsemen have been fighting for you. The blood has not fallen upon your hands. You don't even know 
that the Lord is fighting for you, but the blood is on Jesus Christ. Right. Those of us that are washed in the blood, hallelujah, that is the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on Calvary's cross when he died and he fought for me. Do I have a witness here today? Yes. Hallelujah. Then the text helps me understand that there's also a white horse. And the white horse, hallelujah, that stands behind the church stands in victory. Yes. And then he goes on and he shows us the vision of the four carpenters and the four horns. The Bible says that the four horns represents the nations that has caused me to sin, or the the, 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 the the nations that have caused me to drift away from God. There are some people here today that need to understand that you didn't drift away from God because you intended to. There are some people that pulled you away from God. There's some stuff that was in your life. There's some things that around your life that pulled you away from God. Drinking pulled you away. Drugs pulled you away. That adulterous lifestyle pulled you away from God. Hallelujah. It was planted there by the hands of the enemy to cause you, hallelujah, to drift away from God. And God says, hallelujah, that the horsemen understand, hallelujah, that those things caused you to drift away. And God says, I'm not coming after you, but I'm coming after the nations that caused you to drift away. I like that in the text because he helps me to understand that the battle is not mine, but the battle belongs to the Lord that I don't have to fight for that caused me to stumble, that caused me to mess up, that caused me to do things that's ungodly, but I need to stand still and watch the salvations of God because God's going to handle it in his own time. Do I have a witness of worshipers here today? Touch your name and tell them God's going to handle it. You can smile now, you can lift your head now, it's going to be alright, God going to pay the bill, God's going to work it out, God's going to heal your body, God's going to bring your family back together, touch your name and tell God going to work it out. Stop looking down, lift up your head, oh ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in your life, because God is going to work it out. Touch your name and tell him he's going to work it out. Jerusalem, and now here we see them approaching. 
teaching Jerusalem. Jerusalem is not built yet. We see the man, the angel, that is measuring the length of the new Jerusalem. It's not built. Jerusalem is still in pieces. It's about to be built, but it's not built yet. There's somebody here today that you're still in pieces, and God has not built you yet, but he's measuring around you on how he's going to build you. Hallelujah. And your praise does not come from where you are, but it's coming from where you're going to be. I feel like praising God right there because somebody got a praise that's coming out in 2020 that's going to blow the minds of people that can look at somebody and say, I ain't got it yet, but I'm praising God for what he's going to do. He didn't open the door yet. I don't got the miracle yet, but I'm praising him. I just got a They, they, they can't see, hallelujah, the house built because it was broken. They can only reflect at the former days. They can't see yet what it's going to be in here. In the 10th verse, God tells them something that's going to literally blow our minds. There are some things that you can't see, but God will still tell you to rejoice. Watch the text. I'm right in the 10th verse. We need to understand they can't even see it built yet, but he tells them to something that's peculiar that don't make sense hallelujah he's telling them to rejoice and they don't even see the blessing somebody don't understand that God is trying to see how much he can trust you if he can really give it to you that you will praise him before you get it you missed the praise right there somebody needs to know that your praise right now is if he's going to open the door if he's going to make the way if you can praise him
this is indeed said the Lord. He says that many nations shall be joined to the Lord. Look at this. He helps us understand the 10th verse because he says, he says, I'm going, I'm, he says, he says, get excited because I'm coming. He, he says, don't worry about the, the house. Don't worry about the car. He says, but get excited because I'm coming. He says, I ain't just coming. He says, but I'm going to dwell with you. Hallelujah. This is it. This is it. Watch this. And the people that scattered you are going to come and dwell with you. Now wait a minute. If I would have cussed her out for what she did to me, I would have lost my blessing. But because I kept my mouth shut, He says, he talks about 
inheriting something that already belongs to him. But what the reason why he uses the word inherit is because when you inherit something, it is something that somebody else owned and now they gave it to you. Look at what he says in the text. He says, I lost Judah, but I'm about to inherit them again because they changed partners. They belong to somebody else, but touch them, they will tell them they're coming back. They're coming back to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're coming back with scars on them. favorite part. 
And I'm done, I promise you. He said, look at this verse. He said, he said, be silent. Yeah. Oh, all flesh before the Lord. Why does he say, Brother Bobby, be silent, O flesh? Why is he asking the flesh to be silent? He's saying it as a command. In other words, he commands, O flesh, be silent. Because he helps us to understand that when the Lord, hallelujah, is building this new Jerusalem, your flesh is not going to make the compromises that you need to make to get to Jerusalem. Your flesh is going to go and say, I want to go back to Babylon because we had fun in Babylon. We did what we wanted to do in Babylon. We praised God the way we wanted to praise God. We had Sunday one, we praised God one Sunday, we played church the next Sunday. We gave money one Sunday, we didn't give money the next Sunday. We just kept playing church Sunday after Sunday when we was in Babylon. But now that we're in Jerusalem, he's holding me to a different standard. God knows us better than we know ourselves. We get in church and act holier than that.
what are the benefits to that? If he brings down the walls and he becomes the wall Amen. of the church, then anything that's not of God can't get in the church. When he's in the church, let the glory fill the temple. Amen. He says, when the glory fills the temple, the priests are not going to be able to preach. The deacons are not going to be able to read the scripture. Because my glory is going to fill the house. I don't know about you, but I want to come to church where the glory has filled the house. Where the presence of the Lord is in the house. I want to be in a church that knows how to rejoice not because they have things, but because Jesus is in the midst. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, please. Everybody in the building. Come on, praise him. Come on, give him a real praise, everybody. Let us all stand. There may be someone here today, my brother or sister. You know who you are. You're looking for a church without walls. Tired of having church like normal. I want to be a part of a church that allows God to be a wall of fire. I want to feel his power. I want to experience his glory. I want to be in a place that's going to challenge me to live holy. If you're here today, my brother, my sister, harden out your heart. Step out of your seat and come to Jesus while you still have time. It's not too late for you. I don't care what you're going through. God is able to bring you through it. The God that we serve is able to take you through the storms of your life. If you're here today, come to him now. Don't wait, don't look around. Just start stepping to Jesus. If you're here, my brother, if you're here, my sister, harden out your heart. Tomorrow is not promised to you, but come down. While you still have time. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Are you here, my brother? What are you waiting for, my sister? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God. Thank you, Lord. You're so awesome, God. Is there one that will come? Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody.
together as one family, Christ. To the Johnson's family, thank you for giving me one of the greatest opportunities of my life to be able to dedicate your children to mean a lot to me. Because you could have went to any pastor in Worcester County. Amen. That's the kind of respect your family has. But you chose to come here. And I just want you to know that I appreciate that. And to let you know that I thank you for blessing me. You think I blessed you, but you blessed me. And I just want to say thank you. And to all of the Star family, there were some that stood up today. Y'all are never strangers. Y'all are always family. Same church, different name. And it's always good to see you. Every single one of you. And those of you that are going to the Johnson's family, y'all eat a plate for me. Amen? And hold me a little plate on the side. Because I just may sneak up in there. Amen, amen. Let us all look unto the Lord. I'm going to ask, amen, because I'm losing my voice. If Minister Myra would come and give us the benediction as we leave. In the heart, burn with that word of God today. Amen. God is so good. He's been with us all day long. Eight o'clock, Sunday school, and even unto now. Four hearts and minds in prayer. Let us look to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for the word, Lord God, that came forth all day long. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love, your joy. Father God, as we go home, Father God, let and or wherever we're going, Father God, let us not depart from your presence. Let us keep this word that we have received. Let it seep deep down into our spirits, Father God. Let it be a life-changing word. Bless everyone here from the pulpit to the door, Lord God, as we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.